My name is Monty Tisland. Today we will be discussing Epicor's UD tables and what they're used for. One item to note is to that today's demonstration will be done in Epicor 10.1. Before we get into what are they used for, let's discuss the UD tables and what they are. In Epicor 10.1, there are 62 UD tables. Uh, this can also be said for Epicor 10 and Epicor 9. I believe that should be all of Epicor 9, but don't know that for sure. There are 40 single UD tables, UD01 through UD40, and there are 11 parent-child UD tables. So UD100A, which is the parent, and UD100 through UD110A slash UD110. Oops. Let's talk about the table structures. <coughs> All of the UD tables have the following key table features, or I should say fields. Let's talk about the table structure. All of the UD tables have the following fields in them. And they start with the company field, which is an NVAR car 8. There are five key fields, key 1 through key 5 and they are all NVAR car 50. One thing to keep in mind as you start putting these things in here and you want to relate them to other tables is that they have they are NVAR car and not necessarily an inter decimal or whatever else you're looking for so just keep that in mind. There are 10 character fields character 01 through character 10 they're NVAR car max which means you can put in as much text as you want and I believe that is something that changed in 10 between 9 and 10. I believe that in 9 they had a different, they only had a certain number of 255 or 500 or something. So there are 20 number fields, number 01 through number 20, and they are decimals, 20 with 9 decimal places. There are 20 date fields, data 1 to date 20. There are 20 checkbox fields, checkbox 01 through checkbox 20, and those are all bits in SQL. There are 20 short character fields, and that's short care 01 to short care 20, and those are NVAR car 50. Now, the only tables that are different are the parent UD tables, and the only thing different about them is they have an additional five key fields, and those are the child key 1 through child key 5 and NVAR car 50, and those match up with the key fields in their associated child tables. One thing to note as well is that if for some reason you want to or don't have enough fields you can add UD fields to these tables as well so let's do a demonstration one thing too before we go too far here is in these UD fields or for say in any of them if you want if you create a UD field and you want to have it so that you can do a right click context menu you can do it in two different ways First off, we'll go to the extended UD table maintenance. Oops, too far. So let's go to the UD01. And I created this just to make sure that we could add these fields to them in 10.1. I added this field. If I wanted to say that Monty test underscore C was like the part number, I would have to type in, say, the schema, so it'll be like ERP part table like part num. You have to type them in, they have to be exact, and if they don't match, then they won't work. Now, what this could be useful for is if you know, if you A, you know for sure what it is, and B, if you're putting these in there already. The downside to this is that if you put this in, if I were to put this in this field right now, I would have to regenerate the data model in order for this to be available to me to use. The other option is to use the extended properties. And then let's select the same one. I'm going to go grab this one again. If I do this in here, there's a different way I can do this. See, now here's the like. I can say, hey, I want it via the part. I'm going to grab the part. I'm going to say, it is like. 
part num. You can put the label in. Make sure that it's linked to that particular one. And then I can hit save. Once, If I would hit save on this, then it would immediately be, be available. And as soon as I close the forum and open it back up again, it should be available. We should be able to right click and say, hey, the part number is like this. If I right click in there, then it should pop up the context menu for the part tracker and the other associated items. I'm not going to save that right now, but just keep that in mind. That's what's going forward. Now, what do we have to do in order to use the UD forms? And the UD forms are associated with the UD tables. So what we need to do is go into Menu Maintenance. And we're going to have to, you need to add a new menu item in the list, which I've already done both of them. I've done one which is a single which we gave it a new menu item, gave it a name, made it for all companies. I put the order sequence towards the bottom, menu items, and then we pick the program that we want to display in here. This would be no different than any other items on here. But so we would just need to go down here and associate. We need to get past the ERP, which are the ones that are the standard Epicor ones. That are normal. If we get on under the ice, those are the ones that are the programmatic ones that we need to deal with. So we've come down here. Haha, -ha, there we are. Here are the UD fields. UD01 is associated with UD01 table, and UD09 is obviously associated with UD10 or UD09. Now, if we want to do the ones that are in the uppers, which is the next one. We would select that one. This is the parent child one. This is the first parent child one, and that would be the last parent child one. Since I've already put that in there, I'll leave that as is. Here's the parent child one, shows to the 100. That one's a 1. So now that we have it on our menu item, we can actually go into here. We can go into, I've dropped this in sales orders, general ops. Here's my single UD form. Now this is the standard out of the box form that comes up for the UD form. As you can see in here, it immediately throws in the key fields and a description on this main form, which you can go into customization mode and you can manage it however you want. And if you wanted to, you could actually use the list for it. This way it, it just kind of, by default, throws in a list of items that you want to actually display in here. It's just a good starting point for you to do this. And let's leave that one open temporarily, and let's go look at what the difference is with the parent-child ones. Now here's the parent-child one. Here's the detail which shows the parent keys. And then if we go on the child tab here, now we see the here are the child keys, which are those five keys, or the child keys on the parent one. And it also lists, here are those keys that are linked to that. So now, the question becomes is what can we do with them? And the answer to that is you can do whatever you want. These are just simply placeholders that you can use for whatever you want. Uh, some of the cases that we have used them for is I have created a system that does a part forecast and all the only on there is a basically a button that says start the process. I've done, and so in that case, there's a whole lot of custom code in there that calls other things and does a lot of different things. And and then, uh, like I say, all it, all it shows is just a button on the front. I've done other ones where we've done a lot of custom code and had it shown. It showed how long it took, the number of records, other sort of items that you can put whatever you want in here. Other things you can put in here is you can say you wanted to keep track of Let's say for some reason you wanted to try to find, you have a particular client that has a whole bunch of orders, you drop the orders into here and you're doing some manipulation trying to look for either a pattern or if there's something missing, you can, you can throw these in here. You can use uh, BPMs in order to 
move the information in here or you can hand type it in you can even upload it via Excel if you wanted to if you had the Excel connect the sky's the limit it's what you want to do here the parent child UD tables are good for using if you say you have the order head and the associated order details or the order detail with the associated order releases it gives you a one level of automatically linked together so that you can put them in place and not have to worry about okay now I have to use UD01 and UD02 and I have to link them somehow and and how do I link them and all sorts of other things so they're useful in that matter but the whole point with this is that these are just this is just simply a sandbox or playground whatever term you want in order for you to do whatever you need to do for custom fields if there's a particular custom field where say you wanted someone to log in a particular how many hours they played softball who knows you can put whatever you want in there this is again it's just a playground that you put in here if you have you can have multiple things that actually use this UD01 form if you want you just have different customizations uh, if they use if it's going to need to use a database you would only want one per you know use the same form for that if you have if you want to have one to say here's the catch-all we're not storing any of the data we're just using it to get information so that we can hey maybe we're gonna print a label out with it you can use this as well where you put all the information in and then pop you push print and it prints it right out you're not storing any information you can use then you can have a multitude of customizations that use the same forward but they never really touch the data so and that in a nutshell is kind of what these UD fields are for uh, they're just here so that you can if there are external things you need to do or side things you need to do uh, it gives you a mechanism to do so without having to create a side custom software package to run you can still run them from within Epicor so with that I thank you very much for your time and you have a good day.